Yes, indeed, it is the Drum Brigade Podcast. We are in beautiful San Diego, California, in the Beat Locker. I am Corey Kingston. Sitting across from me is the fantastic, the filthy. He's producing the show. He's holding it down. Without him, I wouldn't know how to do this. I would just be talking to a mic that wasn't plugged into anything. <laughs> He's Funky Phil Pardell. What's up, Funky Phil? Oh, you know, same biz, <laughs> same stuff. Show 14. Having a great day so far. Yeah. I dropped my, uh, my glasses in the toilet this morning. <laughs> I'm so, so glad you didn't tell me that before so the not, show. I'm not wearing those right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask. Uh, I was like, "Did you I get washed glasses? them real good?" I'm letting them. Sure, you did. Dry sure out. You right did. Now, I swear. You straight got poop on your glasses. <laughs> De- no, there was. No, it wasn't that graphic, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was definitely. It was like right while I was trying to leave too. Oh. So it was. Uh, it was a good start to the day. How do you like? <laughs> what are you even doing? You're leaning over while you're peeing. I don't remember, man. I was like <laughs> trying to. I was like, I don't know. I accidentally caught my glasses with my hand, and it, it, they just flew uh, off my face and landed in the toilet. That is awesome. At least it wasn't my phone. I know. At least I always think about that. Like I always think, I don't want to drop anything in the toilet. I think my dad has dropped his phone in the toilet before. I'm like, what do you do? I, I'm kind of like, looks like I'm getting a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like not using that thing anymore uh dude well your glasses look great you're wearing sunglasses you're cool guy in me right now they're parsh they're they're like they're they're tinted they're tinted glasses you're so cool phil sorry <laughs> gosh <laughs> you know you dropped them in on purpose so you could be cool yeah you <laughs> found me out <laughs> um show 14 man well technically it's show 15 because we had like a bonus show this weekend at the san diego drum show oh yeah so this is like show 14 that was show 13 a i guess um or b or whatever you want to call whatever you want to call it um let me get this show started by mentioning how you can listen to this show uh we got it on all the platforms on itunes on stitcher on soundcloud on TuneIn, on drumbrigade.com and on youtube um we also have a web show coming up soon we're working on it um we're just having trouble finding a studio dude I'll be honest with you. We are we are trying to come up with ideas. We're brainstorming about our web show. We want it to be good. We don't have a studio yet, so we might be doing it at Phil's Castle. Yeah, we'll we'll do some shooting on location. Yeah, as they say. Yeah, I think they say that. Our web show will be a little bit more like funny and a little bit more educational and a little bit more entertaining. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that we have going on for that. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, it's coming soon. Um, for all of our, our lessons and all that stuff and content, um, make sure you subscribe to our, our YouTube page and also all of our platforms on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and then also constantly checking out drumbrigade.com for all of our content. We are also working on a Patreon, um, that will coincide with our web show. We'll have exclusive content for you guys. So if you want to uh, support us, support our Patreon, yo. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, we'll have exclusive content for our, our members of Patreon. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Drum Brigade. The Drum Brigade is a community. It's a family. It's a place for drummers, drum enthusiasts, future drummers, and people who are just playing into music and culture to be among like-minded individuals. Drum Brigade is a way to support each other as fellow drummers, but also a means to push each other to excel and expand horizons in a spirit of camaraderie rather than negative competition. Drum Brigade has products, events, as well as stickers, lessons, t-shirts, drumsticks, sheds, community events, a podcast, a web show, all kinds of things we do for you people, our drum community or music community. The question is, are you part of the brigade? Brigade? <laughs> Drum Brigade is the Brotherhood of Drums. For more information, please visit www.drumbrigade.com. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. You ready to get into this, Funky Phil? Heck yes. <laughs> I need to add some high-pitched drum brigade voices in there. 
uh what's up phil how was your week it's good man yeah i played some gigs hung out at that drum show uh, yeah san diego drum show yeah that was, that was fun man it was like it wasn't as big of a deal as i thought it was gonna be and i don't mean that negatively like i just expect i don't know why every time we do a drum event i expect nam show yeah. you know like and then I show up and I'm like, oh, this is cool. It's just like our homies like hanging out and some new people and like people that are just interested in drums and, you know, and then it's cool. So we like we did a live podcast and had a bunch of like met some people and had some of our, our buddies on and people that we work with um, on the show. You'll have to go back and listen to that episode. Um, it was really cool. You guys, you guys, you guys got to meet Fireman Eric finally. <laughs> finally dude came on dude just giving away product just here take some drum brigade sticks like <laughs> there help, help yourself at the drum show dude like you want it we got it here just take it no, it was no. good it's good to <laughs> hang out with eric yeah no it was cool i got to play his new his new <laughs> vessel drums <laughs> they sounded great they played great your vessel drums were there too yeah mine sound better <laughs> of course they do um no, it sounded great though they're super punchy yeah, his, they sounded i told him they sounded like his whole drum set was made out of bass drums yes that is <laughs> what it sounds like, like they're like straight punch you in the gut like that's every, partially except the snare drum that was like super cranked <laughs> that's partially because he doesn't really know how to tune drums i don't think oh <laughs> that's not fair he could you know, play he drums dude can he could he could play drums maybe that's just the way he likes to hear them they didn't sound out of tune they just sounded like his rack tom, he has a 12-inch rack tom. It sounds like my floor tom. Yeah. It's it low was, as can you can go. It was deep. And then a 24-inch kick, it's like super like heavy metal bass drum. It's a that's a great sounding kick drum. Yeah, it was a cannon. That and then awesome. 16 inch sounds like a 20 inch gong. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, floor tom gong or something. And then his snare sounds like a marching band snare, just as tight as you can possibly get it. He's got a he's got a sound, man. That's what he likes, you know. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, people are probably it's all don't, about. People are probably like, yeah. Why does your Why does your drum sound like that? You know, the way they sound, like absolutely gorgeous and beautiful and perfect. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't play a vessel drums, so I can't hit the button. But nope. Phil does. Um, your drums do sound fantastic. Yeah, Corey. I need to get new heads, though, man. Yeah, I need you to do. Hit up Aquarian, the best drum head company in the world. <laughs> yes that is a free plug and that's because i endorse that company and i hate when a guys on other podcasts are like oh it's the best because i play vic firth it's the best no but literally i've played a lot of different things and aquarian's the best i do yeah i've been i've been playing those <laughs> since i was a wee lad yeah i don't I care agree. what you drummers say you can talk to me all you want about remo and all those other companies those companies are good too but i prefer aquarian that's it it's just a preference mm -hmm. all right <laughs> um yeah i need to i need to get new heads i haven't changed my heads in a year and a half none of them no snare drum i did but that's ludicrous dude i play my drums like several times a week those heads <sighs> yeah i just puked in my mouth a little bit when you said that. <laughs> sorry man sorry <laughs> i need to get new heads um so aside from the drum show, like, oh, wait, wait, okay, okay, because you had to bounce, yes. So you missed the Pat Piffner clinic, yes, which was very informative and cool. He had a lot of really, really rare vintage drum equipment, and he got he got into the history of the drum set. Wow, and uh, he had like yeah some really old cool cool drums from yeah. way back. You know, he went through all the way from the very beginning of the kit or before a kit even existed. Dang, that's dope. all the way through like current stuff. It was really good. Like it seems like all the cool stuff, like right when I was leaving, like a bunch of people started showing up and like he was I, I saw Mike like loading in some stuff. I didn't get to talk to him, but he was loading in like all this cool equipment, like vintage looking stuff. And I was just like, Whoa, this is looking like cool, but I had to dip out to a gig, so it seemed like all the cool stuff happened right when I left, <laughs> which <laughs> no, is normally was, how it happens. It was cool, though. Yeah, I didn't realize that the first snare wires, like the wound mm -hmm. 
Metal Snare Wires were created in San Diego. I did not know that. Yeah, a little feather in our cap <sighs> there. I wish I had a drop for something that's like says yeah, yay <laughs> here. Gosh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. Where in San yeah. Diego? Vista? Uh, he did not specify. <sighs> Whatever. What a lame clinic, but, dude. I mean, they're pretty, <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> it was, yeah, I don't know. It was a long time ago. But yeah. it, was, it was a great clinic. Man, that's cool. That's cool. Like, yeah, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if he's going to be like, so here's how you play jazz. Or like, you know, here's brush technique or something. Like, But it's like, a, I like, I love clinics that are like unique. Like, um. What's what's the dude that's um his his name is also Mike. He has a long ponytail. He always hangs out at um at Drum Flip and he always plays songs in like 15. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Gosh, I wish I knew his name. I feel so bad for saying this on the air without knowing his name. Mike Stone, right? Stone, Mike yeah. Stone. Yes, Mike Stone. Like he did a really great clinic at Drum Flip. It was one of the only ones I ever went to at Drum Flip. Um but it wasn't like, okay, so here's how I play songs in 15. But he did do that. And he like blew people's minds by doing that. But it was like all about how to mic up drums, how to get a good drum sound for doing drum videos and like how to be successful in making YouTube videos for drummers. And I'm like, that's so informative. Like, I want to know this kind of stuff. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I like, I like seeing, like, I like going to, um, to, to, clinics and seeing guys like melt your face off but then i also like to be informed about stuff yeah mike's he's great yeah we gotta he's get a, him on sometime yeah yeah he's a cool dude man he was like super nice like super friendly and like really like humble and like really informative clinic so i like i would have liked that that clinic like with other mike mike piffner um pat 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 piffner wasn't it no mike piffner Dude, now I'm so confused. I sound like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, anyway, yeah, it was it cool. Was informative. He, he got right? into some playing elements, um, mostly regarding to the development of the kit, because as the styles changed, yeah, and what people were doing with the drums, it, it obviously the drum set itself evolved. So yeah. it was kind of interesting seeing all the, you know, literally there was bells and whistles, yeah, and like wood blocks and all you know all sorts of stuff was like standard for a long time and then eventually you know we yeah, get to, that like straight we rack. get all the way to where we are now where it's like <laughs> didn't they use they used to have the like straight rack on the front of the like with cowbells and stuff like yeah on the kick drum yeah, yeah and they had like cool stuff, toms man. imported from china yeah that's dope they were not tunable they were just like yes. tacked onto a man like, like animal hides tacked onto a frame that's crazy that's crazy. That's really dope. So yeah, I'm bummed I missed that. And you should be bummed you missed it too, everyone. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't there. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, so make sure you go back and listen to that episode. That was really fun. That was something new for us too, doing like a live podcast with like noise in the background and people playing drums and Pat Piffner. Gosh, Mike Piffner. Pat, Pat Piff Is Mike Piffner like a metal drummer? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, it it could be. That's what I think I kept thinking that like that's who was coming to do this clinic, like a metal drummer, or like prog uh, rock drummer, and like he had like four bass drums and was just like gonna. Well, there were four bass drums up there, I yeah, think, but, but not the kind. Not of like that. Of, yeah. <laughs> so um, I always tell my students that like the drum set is basically like you know back in the old days it was like like more like marching band kind of style like you know like the bass drum and the snare drum and you know it's yeah, like there the, were separate the jobs. pieces and yeah, like, like multiple people yeah <laughs> and so we're our job now is to try to in, incorporate all those pieces as a drum set as one dude like we're like a one man band um and yeah that's cool so that's cool to hear the history of that um how was your gigs this week good man they're super fun they were i i had some really fun ones they were not like uh high stress or you know i didn't have to suit up really yeah they're like pretty pretty cool outdoor gigs oh, that's good nice. crowds everyone was dancing freaking out having fun dude i have to straight up get completely suited like yeah i'm talking penguin suit, bow tie everything for my gig tonight and tomorrow bow tie i normally wear a bow tie yeah sick 
Like I, I mean, like this gig, dude. It's not like a really crazy gig. It's just at a swanky place. It's like just a, like a low key jazz jazz gig. Um, it's at Eddie V's in San Diego. Nice. And um, so the first gig I played with this dude, it was a, it was like a few weeks ago, maybe like a month ago. And I was already in San Diego, and I was in just like normal gig clothes. Like I had like dark jeans on and like a button down shirt. And I was like, well, I'll bring like a like a jacket, you know, like a blazer, just in case I need to get dressed up, and like a hat. <laughs> and then when I was in San Diego, the guy's like, hey man, yeah, looking forward to tonight. Hey, just so you know, we get dressed up, you know, we wear ties and stuff. And I'm like, oh, um, <laughs> I don't really have anything like that with me, man. I'm already down here. Do you want me to buy something? And he's just like, no, man, you're you're fine. Dude, I showed up and I was full on underdressed, dude. I felt like such a squid, dude. Like, oh no. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't, I'm like, I don't even know what to do. Like, I was wearing my jacket. I was sweating my butt off because it was so hot. And I was still like, I'm not taking off this jacket because I don't want to look like underdressed. And so the next day, I'm like, trust me, man. I know how to dress up for gigs. Trust me. Like, I know I look like kind of sloppy right now, but tomorrow it will be different and so the next day dude i showed up full on like full on dude like bow tie yes like dress shoes i wore a full on suit like and the guy like when i walked in he's just like whoa okay uh yeah like you look sharp man nice so, so you, I have to you do know how to dress up Corey. thanks man um yeah so i have to get suited and booted tonight um dude for me my gigs we're good. I'm just burnt out. Yeah. So I've had the busiest like two weeks or three, like actually two months have been like, it's almost like I'm on tour, but I'm home, you know? Like, I feel like I haven't seen my wife at all. Like I'm waking up in the morning and I'm like, okay, I got to go. Like I got like a lesson. I got a session. I got the drum brigade podcast. I got gigs. I got a gig after that. Like it's been super nuts. Um, which leads me to another point and it's not a soapbox, Phil, don't get your hopes uh, up. I do have a soapbox today though. Sure you do. <laughs> um, we're not going to have a show next week. We're Why? not going to have a show next week. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> I need a vacation and it's my anniversary. What? Yes. Congratulations. 13 years. 13 years. Yes. That's amazing. 13 years. So we are going away. We're probably going to be in Mexico and... We're going to be like, now I'm telling you guys all this. Don't come to my house, like looking for my masters of maple drums. Like I'm going to take those drums. <laughs> Corey's out of town in Mexico. I ain't telling you that. I'm just letting you in on my life. All right. I got vicious cats. They'll bite your face off. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. We're taking uh, a little break. We need one and we're going to go spend some time together. So Tuesday, good. I will be back in the United States at Disneyland. What? Yeah. Going to Disney? <laughs> going to Disneyland. Oh, man. Like a little kid, and I'm going to go on It's a Small World, and I'm going to sing every single word. That's a great ride. <laughs> it's like the longest one, and it's so chill. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't wait. I'm going to drink beer. What? Yeah, I'm going to do it, Phil. Oh, man. And I'm can I go, too? Oh, uh, that sorry. sounds fun. It's just for me and my wife, dude. Dang sorry. it. Sorry. sorry. Um, okay, so aside from that, yeah, I don't even want to talk about my gigs because they were just gigs and sessions i had sessions and gigs and they were just that it was working 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 and i'm burnt out you need a vacation yeah you need to go to disneyland it's weird because this whole month start or this whole year started so slow that i was just like starving for work like come on come on i need work and then it's like all of a sudden the floodgates open and then i know they're gonna be they're like gonna be closing soon <laughs> Yeah. So I'm like trying to take as much work as I can and like while I can get it and hopefully I don't know, man. I well, yeah, I think I talked about it last week, but I I bailed on my teaching gig. <clears throat> so I have like a few more weeks like cuz I don't just like go in and flip tables over and be like I'm out. I quit. <laughs> like not this time. Not this time no. <laughs> so I like try to give them some notice. But then they hired another teacher and then they just told me that that teacher quit too. <laughs> what? So yeah, their, their teacher, like, she's like, she's like, can you, um, can you sub October 11th? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I probably can. The new guy. And she's like, yeah, my, my new drum instructor just quit. 
You're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> he was so, only there for like a week. Was it the guy that was like shadowing me the other I day? I think so, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. I think so. So. Wow. Yeah, oh, I think rough. they're dropping like flies and like it's kind of, it's, it's, I feel bad because I, you know, but at the same time, man, I got to move on. Like I, it's not my problem anymore. It's not my school. And it's like, I just, yeah, I can't, I can't, I don't got time. <laughs> yeah. We got to focus on like a lot of more important things. And, and since then, like, so since, since I quit, I got, so I, I quit two teaching jobs. Okay. Since I quit, I got like a residency gig that like the guy told me is completely booked all the way through the, the rest of the year. Yes. So every, every Tuesday, every Wednesday I have residency gigs and he's like, and then they're going to add on Friday and Saturday. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do those, dude. Ooh, you're going to need a sub. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like I'm like, yeah, that's Fridays are not you like, those are out of the question. Like I, I almost always have gigs every Friday, every Saturday. So I'm like, I can't do those, but every Tuesday, every Wednesday. So that's part of it where I'm like, man, right now I'm juggling all my gigs. I've been getting a lot of studio work and then I've been getting like my lessons and it's just like, dude, I can't, I can't anymore. Like I gotta, I gotta chill for a minute. So I'm burnt, burnt, but, um, it's cool. At least we got stuff to talk about on the show. Yeah, man. (laughs) Well, it's good problems to have. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Sounds good. Um, okay. So this show, man, we have a guest. We're having Che on from Haram Drumsticks and products. Um, he's a good dude. I do have a soapbox. I, you've you've said this already. Yes. Oh, I do. It sounds a like a box. serious. One. I probably have several soapboxes, but I have to pace myself. Like I said, it's been busy, but this one's been stewing for a while because this happened a few weeks ago. Uh oh, maybe a few months ago, and I've been holding on to this one, and I forgot to talk it talk about it on our show. So it's coming out today. Oh man. Oh yeah. It's oh yeah. Be a long episode, and I think we're gonna get into my soapbox before we bring on Che because. Is yeah, I got to get into this. Um, we got some crazy questions. We got the basic um, questions. We got the rapid fire Q and A, and we got the would you rather. We'll go over those with Che, and then we got the question of the day. Um, it kind of has something to do with our question of the day from last week. So we'll get into all of that. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Drum brigade. Oh yeah. Well, Phil. Yeah. I gotta do this before we get Che on. It's been another week, and it's oh, that time. No. Bruh. I ain't trying to hear that right now. All right. <laughs> this happened a few weeks ago, dude. I was hot. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I think I've told you this story, but <clears throat> a few weeks ago, I'm not going to mention names, people. All right. If you think I'm talking about you, I'm not. All right. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I'm playing a Schmucky Metals showcase gig. Sweet. Um, <clears throat> sorry. I'm, I'm getting amped up here. Just thinking about this. This really had me going. Okay, let me break it down. I'm playing the Schmucky Metals showcase gig. I meet up with my buddy Kevin. We carpool in so that we don't have to pay for parking downtown, or one of us does. It's always him, not me. Anyways, uh, I he goes, hey, just so you know, there's another drummer coming through. I have to put him on the showcase. It's political. He just moved here from a different city, and... He's, he works for the Schmucky Metals band in the city that he's from. So I have to like put him on this gig because the people like they try to keep it in the family with the Schmuck, Schmucky Metals band. So like if you move to a different city, they try to give you the opportunity to pick up work in that city. Or if you're traveling, like say, for example, you travel to like Florida or something and you're like, hey, I'm going to be there for a month. Maybe I can pick up a couple gigs. They try to make it so that you can possibly do that. Which is really cool, right? That's super cool. So, but there, there's like you have to understand that there's people that already work, like, like, like. So this dude comes from wherever he's coming from. Not saying where, okay? <laughs> he's coming from wherever he's coming from. 
to San Diego. I live in San Diego. You live in San Diego. Yep. All of our friends live in San Diego. And a lot of us play with the Schmucky Metals band. Okay. Or sub for each other. There's like four or five dudes that are like regularly called. Like me and Fig are like the two main dudes that are, are normally called for the Schmucky Metals gig. Yep. So I normally do all the showcases. So I show up at the showcase ready to, to play. And then he's like, just so you know, there's going to be a guy there that's going to, he's going to sit in for a few songs. This fool <laughs> shows up. So we get there at five. He shows up at like four, four thirty. He just comes in like he's going to take over this gig. This is his gig now. Uh-oh. And I'm not exaggerating. Like he comes in. This is, I'm going to come in here and like show these fools how I do it. And I'm going to set up my stuff. And this is my gig now. So he, he shows up earlier purposely. He shows up earlier than I get there. I walk in with my cymbals and my snare and my sticks. And I'm like, Hey, what's up? He's sitting behind the drums and he's got all of his stuff set up, his cymbals, his snare, everything. It's set up like the way that he wants it. He's coming into my gig, dude. Yep. He's coming into my gig and he's, setting his stuff up like it's his gig now okay and this place has a backline usually right yes but not symbols or snare no yeah so okay well let me like let me try to explain like why this is wrong because like me and you have done this together like we've you've come in on the schmucky metal showcase yeah and like it was not an issue you didn't show up early and be like it's, I'm having a hard time explaining this, but okay. So basically I was like, Hey, Kevin, Kevin's a consultant for this area. I go, Hey man, I'm going to bring in my buddy, Phil. He wants to get in with the, with the Schmucky metals band. Can he come to the showcase? He's like, yeah, bring him in the showcase. So then you showed up suited and booted <laughs> with some drumsticks. And that was it. You're showing up on, on my gig. Right. Yep. And you're trying to like basically audition to get in with this, the network so that you can start playing gigs. Yeah. So, and I did not adjust any of your equipment, <laughs> even though you're like at least four feet taller than me. <laughs> yes. I, yes. I used your snare, I used your cymbals, and I had fun. Yeah. And I was like, Phil, go ahead and adjust whatever you need to. But it's it's kind of hard, right? So like like we looked over the list, and it was like, how many songs did you play? Like two. Uh, I think. Three, three, three maybe yeah. Four, You're like, remember. yeah, I can do these three. That's fine. Yeah, and you know, obviously, you can do more. You could do the whole set. I know that. We all know that. You wouldn't have been invited if we don't know that. You know, if we didn't think that. But it was like, yeah, I'll do. I'll, I would like to do these, and that was it. I played my beginning set, and then I was like, okay, cool. Phil comes up, slides in there, plays his three songs. All right, cool. I slide back up there, play my the rest of the set, and it's done. That's how the gig is supposed to done. I've also be done. That's I've also done this same thing with Fig. Me and Fig used to be the two drummers on the showcase. So we would just figure out who wants to play the first half and who wants to play the second half. So it was never an issue. It was always just like, dude, if you want me to bring my stuff next time, I can bring my stuff. It was like, all right, cool, whatever, man. We work it out. But that was like two drummers that already have the gig, and that was both of our gig. It was a shared gig. you know. This dude didn't come in like that. He came in as a guest. Okay. And then he decided that he's going to take it over. He's going to bulldog his way into taking over my gig. Did he try to play all the songs? Yes. <laughs> Phil. Yes. No. Okay. So like, so I get there, I'm already hot. Like this fool just set up all his stuff on my stage. <laughs> like, and I don't get like that. Like, I don't get like that. Like I'm like drummers. Yeah. Drummers unite. We're all part of the community right on, man. Oh, you play cool, man. What style of music, whatever, blah, 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 blah. This fool's rinky-dink stuff was set up. Like, he had flimsy, janky-looking cymbals. Uh-oh. He had a snare. He had, like, a, a acrolyte snare or something, which are dope. They're great. But it was, like, it wasn't tuned right. It, for the stuff we were playing, dude, it just wasn't right. And then I show up with my stuff, and he's like, oh, bro, no, it's good. I got my stuff all set up. You can adjust it however you want, man. Yeah, make yourself at home. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Make I'm like, dude, make home. yourself at home. I am. This is my home, fool. <laughs> and like, so he's like, yeah, man. You know, make adjustments however you want. Yeah, you're welcome to play whatever songs you want. I'm. I mean, literally, this dude is saying stuff like this to me. Duh. And I'm like, 
I'm, I'm like having a hard time because I think this fool's like joking. I'm like, I'm kind of like chuckling, like, okay, like, is this dude for real? And then the whole band is like, who's this fool? And I'm just like, I don't know. Like, what did I do? Like, I don't understand this. And so, so anyways, I started getting mad because then, then it comes time to like, all right, like Kevin goes, hey, just, just look over the set list, see which songs you want to do. Like he tells the, the other drummer that. The other drummer goes, yeah, man, I can do them all. And, and like, he's like, I learned them all. I wrote, out, I wrote out charts for all of them. Okay. So he's trying to, that was not him being like, hey, I'm prepared. He's trying to one up me. Obviously, I don't know how to read. So like, <laughs> I wrote out charts so I can play all the songs. You, like Corey does know how to read, by the way, everybody. <laughs> no, but that was his, his whole intention. Yeah. Like, I'm a more of a professional. I came here early. I set up my stuff. This stuff is vintage, so it's dope. And I wrote out your whole set, so I'm, I'm capable of doing them all. Okay. There was a new song that night. And I was like, oh, man, I'm not really feeling this song. And he's like, I'll, I'll do it. I can do it. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just do it. Man, you don't even really, like, he's literally like, yeah, man, I mean, I can do them all. You don't even really need to be here, basically. Like, he, he didn't flat out say that, but it was like, that's, his, that's mm. what he was saying. Mm-mm. So I was like, I was taking deep breaths and counting to 10. And um, I'm like, I'm kind of like going back to my old ways of just like shrinking back and being like, whatever, dude. Like, just, I know I got the, the gigs, like, you know, and... I know I have like a rep, a rep, reputation and like, I have like, I have like a relationship with all these other musicians. So I know I'm not going to be losing this gig, but I'm also like, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not like a fighter, you know, like I'm not going to jump in and be like, man, F you dude, get out of here. This is my gig. You know, I'm not that guy. Sometimes I gotta be. <laughs> so like I'm stewing, dude, I'm at the bar. I'm like, give me a drink. And like, I'm like, mad and then everybody's going what's up with this other drummer dude and i'm like i don't i don't know he just swooped in here and like he's taken over apparently and then so i asked kevin i go hey man what's going on with this dude and kevin's like dude this isn't this isn't cool like this is your gig you need to go and tell him this is your gig i'm like man i don't want a confrontation dude i'm not like that i'm like just i go look if he's if he's gonna swoop in like that just let him play the whole night i'm like let him let him like bury himself and Kevin's like, no, dude. He's like, and I go, well, what is it that you want me to do? And he's like, I want you to go up there and take all his stuff off and put your stuff on. Yes. And so I'm like, oh, man. So now I'm like, look, I'm, I'm down with doing that. Like, but I want you guys to all know that if something goes down, like, I want to know if you guys will have my back because it's probably going to go down. Those, I'm crossing the line by touching some other dude's stuff and taking it off the drums and replacing it with my stuff and being like, no, you're in, you're in the wrong here. I just feel like that's a confrontation waiting to happen. So that's kind of what I did, dude. No, that is what I did. <laughs> like I just walked up on stage super mad oh, and man. took all his stuff off and put it back in his cymbal bag and removed his snare and put my snare on there. And then we started the rehearsal with me playing. Yes. And then he shows back up and he's like, oh, oh, so you just, you just going to switch out everything? And I'm like, yeah. And then he's like, oh, well, I, you know, I had everything there. And I'm like, well, yeah, but we're going to use my stuff. <laughs> and he's just like, and I'm like looking him like in his eye receptacles, dude, <laughs> whatever oh, no. they are. I'm looking him in his, like, I'm seeing his soul, dude. I'm just like, yeah, we're using my stuff now. And um, I'm ready. I'm just like, say something, please just say something. But I'm also still trying to keep my cool, dude. Drum brigade, you know, camaraderie, all that stuff. But I was not happy with this dude. Not happy with this dude. And so I'm like, uh, he go, I go, yeah, dude. And he's like, oh, okay, so what songs are you going to play? And I'm like, well, dude, the question is like, what songs are you going to play? Like, what songs do you want to play? If you want me to play the whole beginning part of the set, the set we have a lot of other, like, like we have an intro that you kind of need to know. And he's like, well, I'll just read it. And I'm like, no, dude, you, you, he can't, you can't hang on this intro, dude. It's like, I, I can just tell what kind of dude you are, man. You're not the guy, you know, no offense, but like, I can just tell, I know what, what needs to happen on this intro. It's lots of drum fills and all this stuff. And he's, you know, it's like, like I said, dude, I don't, I'm not trying to talk crap on fools that like, you know, I, it's not my style, dude. I like, I like any, any drummer that's out there, dude. 
I want to be friends with because we have something in common. But dude, that's crossing the line. You know, that's like, that's the stuff that gets me on my soapbox where like fools show up with like, like entitlement. Like this is my gig now. That's not how you do. That's not how it works, dude. That's super bad etiquette. What's yeah, your problem? Yeah. If you're a guest, you're, you're, you're a, a freaking guest. guest. I don't care who you play with, where you're from, dude. And, um, and so, yeah, it was like, that's how it went. And so I, <laughs> I kind of went, I kind of went in. Like oh, no. I kind of went in like <laughs> on my plane. Like when we started the set, dude, I kind of went like I was doing more than I normally would do. Like I was kind of like, and I'm not like, I'm, you know, trust me. Like I'm not like the baddest dude in San Diego or anywhere, but like I tried, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I, tr- <laughs> I was trying to like purposely do stuff that I know he couldn't hang with, you know? And, oh, yeah. um, and like, it completely changed his demeanor, dude. At the end of it, he was like, we should exchange numbers, man. Like, yeah, we should hang. I'm just looking for like a drum community to hang out with. And, and I'm like, yeah, man, cool. And then we were cool, you know, but dude, he, he could not hang dude. Like every singer, I'll tell you what happened, dude. At the end of the night, like we, this showcase is for like, like wedding clients and like corporate clients and stuff like that. So instead of giving them a demo, we play a show and then they can come and see us. Yeah. See who they're hiring. So they came up to the consultant, Kevin, at the end of the night and they were like, it was so, he was so bad that they were like, yeah, we really like you guys. We just want to make sure that we get the, the, the first drummer oh. and not the second drummer. And Kevin is like, no, he's just trying out tonight. He won't be on your gig. Oh. And they're like, okay, we just want to make sure that the vibe was totally different when he got on stage. That's and pretty then, severe when the, when the <laughs> when the wedding clients when the wedding clients can tell yeah <laughs> yeah and so they're just staring at the vocalist you know yeah and it was like well that's i mean i didn't have to get in a confrontation i had to like kind of bulldog him back and and move his stuff off my drums you know or off the drums but anyways like it was still like i didn't have to say anything the proof was in the plane you know and he he completely caved he just wasn't up to par dang and he shot himself in the foot and that i learned a lesson too that like when dudes act like that they're overcompensating for something yeah when you have to come you have to come in and kind of take a gig away from somebody you are in the wrong dude you're not you're yeah that is especially not how it works in in san diego that might be how it works like wherever you're from or whatever but it's that's not how it works in san diego we're all cool with each other out here and like for the most part you know and I just feel like, especially among the drummers, we're all cool with each other. We would never do that to each other, you know? And like sitting in is one thing, being a guest is one thing, but like I would never think of like going to your gig and being like, this is my gig now and setting up my symbols, yeah. showing up to your gig early and setting up my stuff and being like, I'm playing with Cassie B now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's yeah, like, no. dude, that's crazy. That's just weird, dude. You're a guest, you're a guest. You know, you you be grateful. You yeah. go. You That's know, how you, you can. He could have you got play the game. only as much as as you're asked to. Right. Uh, you you know, you use the other person's equipment and you'd yeah. be happy about it. Well, the thing that's even <laughs> crazier about this is he showed up the month before, just to scope it out. And so I met him that month, where he was like the month before he was there. Hey man, I'm so and so from so and so, and like he's like. Yeah, man, I play with the Smoky Metals band up there. And yeah, so yeah, I'm moving down here to San Diego. And it was like, cool. But he was like totally scoping it out. So he knew the drill. Like he knew me from the, the month before. He knew how the showcases go. Yeah. And then he showed up to the showcase the next month. Like, okay, so the plan is to swoop in here and take this over. Oh, man. And like, oh. I mean, it was very, very like thought out and very like Sounds like strategic. this dude walked out of there with egg on his face, though. Yeah, he did. Maybe a little more humble. Yeah. And you know, sometimes that's good. He had he that was the only time where I was like this fool needs to be humbled and it's going to happen right here right now, you know? Like I don't do that, dude. I don't I don't do that to people. Like I don't I don't purposely make fools feel stupid and you know, like but this dude I was like I want him I want him to like get back on the stage when it's his turn and kind of I want there to be a difference. And like all of the singers were like, dude, I was not feeling the drummer. And I'm like, well, I didn't have to say anything. He did it to himself, you know? And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, no, he's, he wasn't a bad player. You know, he just wasn't up to par for that gig. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously he can play drums. It's like, not like he can't play, but, um, 
It was a funny situation. Anyways, that was my soapbox. <laughs> I ain't trying to hear that right now. Yes, sir. So, do I sound different to you? <laughs> <laughs> I sound a little different because uh, during my soapbox, my neighbor decided to use his pressure cooker. Oh, come on. That was the steam coming out of your ears. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Dude, that's a whole nother soapbox that I can't get into, but I'm very tempted to push the button because my neighbor gets Don't me do it. going. We got to get Che on. All right, let's get Che on. He's coming up right now. Drum, 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 drum Brigade Podcast. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> we got somebody very cool on the line. One of our homies. You guys know him. You've seen him at Nam. See him playing at church. Has some dope drumsticks, dope t-shirts, dope stick bags, dope cymbal bags. Fantastic beard. Oh, fantastic beard. He's gonna have a little one coming up any day. He's got he buys and sells drums. He does all kinds of stuff, dude. You do so much for the drum community. I'm talking about Che Garcia from Haram Drumsticks and Drum Products. What's going on, man? How's it going? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thank you for having me on. Of course. Pleasure to be here. Okay, you got to fill us in. Uh, Phil pronounces your name Shay. I pronounce your name Che. So which is it? Uh, it's actually Corey. Uh, <laughs> che. Yes. It's Sweet just che. Like, cool. like a dry <laughs> E at the end. Okay. Che. Okay. Cool. Not Che. Uh, I, I have a friend whose name is Che, spelled <laughs> S-H-E-A. Yeah. So it sounds like Che, but it's actually Che. Okay. Short che. Cool. for Jose. Oh, Don't nah. ever call me Jose. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Sweet. I, I could think of a million Jose's right now. So, Che. <laughs> che, that's cool. A million. I like that. That's Ooh. really good. So, how's it going, man? Like, we saw you at the San Diego Drum Show as well. Like, we were there, obviously. Um, you know, you're always, like, doing stuff in the community. Like, how's everything going with you and with Haram? Well, right now, we are gearing up. Uh, it sounds super early. But for smaller companies, it's a big deal. We're gearing up for NAM. Yeah. Uh, we're getting our orders ready. You know, we already got our booth. Uh, we are going to be there. Um, we're trying to get all of our merch and everything lined up. We have uh, two special companies that are going to accompany us at NAM. So it's going to be super fun. Sweet. Uh, we have a cymbal company and a drum company coming with us, tagging oh, along cool. on our booth. So. That seems like the best way to do it these days. Like, you know, like last, like for the last couple of years, we always see like the um, tackle guys and the low boy guys and the big fat snare drum guys, like all linking up together and having a booth together. Um, it, you know, it cool. honestly shows, it shows uh, that, that we're open to, to hold each other's hands. The, the main goal of, of Haram has always been a family deal as, mm -hmm. as corny as it may sound to some. The, the the reason behind Haram Fam hashtag is that we we just we just love on people you know yeah it's it's what my myself and and, and my good friend uh, Yusuf have have always thought of we always thought about the community and that's Drum Brigade is a perfect <laughs> example of that you know that's dope dude yeah we're like we're off the same tree man we're just that's what yeah. we're about too you know that's like. That's so dope. Like, I feel like that's like the, that's like our generation. I think we're like around the same age and like, yeah, it's like our generation and younger. I think maybe it came with like social media and stuff. It's like, yeah, man, it's so different from how it was when I was a kid, you know, and hanging out with my dad's friends and, you know, not, you know, they, they had their whole community and stuff too. But I felt like that community was like really like competitive with each other. And, um, well, it's just different from now. Up Growing up in Mexico, mm -hmm. personally, I grew up in Tijuana, and I picked up my first pair of sticks in Tijuana. So it was a, a very difficult to get to meet other drummers because of distances. One, you're in a country that didn't have that accessibility like, like you would do here locally. But one thing that happened there is that we could play anywhere at any time, and nobody could do anything about the noise. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's here cool. is, is super difficult, but um, the the brotherhood I've noticed that it's it's been getting tighter and tighter, and there's less competition between musicians of any kind. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of cool that we're all like, yeah, you're a super skilled drummer, and you get to hang out with like a novice drummer, and it doesn't matter. 
Right. You know, it's, it's, we love that in Drum Brigade and Haram and all these other companies are trying to portray that, at least in San Diego, which is pretty awesome. I think <laughs> so know? too. That's what we're all, that's like our, that's what we're saying like daily. Yes. <laughs> like Phil and I yeah. are constantly yes. saying the exact same thing. And that's what yeah. makes it great. I was just talking about this to somebody. I don't remember who, but like we were talking, like, like we went out um, to see Fig play a couple of weeks ago and um, he was playing in San Diego, at, like one of the local spots downtown. And like, there's nothing but musicians in there. Like a bunch of drummers were in there and it was like, just chill. It was totally cool. Like we were seeing our friend that, you know, and like, he's obviously one of the, the baddest dudes in, in San Diego, but it's just our community. I was just looking around and being like, man, like San Diego is just so different from like a lot of other places. And I'm really like happy to be here and be a part of it. And like, you know, and it's like, even for the thing that I love the most too, is like, even for a company like us, where we, we have some drumsticks too. And like, you know, we've tried to dabble in like other stuff, you know, apparel and, and lessons and all that stuff. And then you being like kind of, you know, doing it on a bigger scale, like with drumsticks and having a lot of artists and stuff, I still don't ever feel that like competitive competition thing. It's just like, yeah, man, there's like this cool, we're like doing it together. And like, you know, it's like, it's, I, it, there's, it's not like a threatening or it's just a cool, we're part of this company or this, this industry together. And there's, there's a piece of the pie for all of us. One, you know? one of the biggest philosophies that, that Adrian, uh, Yusuf and I share is, is literally that we don't. Okay. So you're going to have your market mm -hmm. with your six. I have mine and it's a choice. Right. We are here to give a drummer a choice. The, the birth of Haram is literally for the working drummer. Mm. Um, we, are, we are so blessed and, and so excited that, that we've gotten a few uh, high-working names in, 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 in the industry, but it's still the, the, the concept is, yeah, you're, you're going to like what you're going to like, yeah. you know? And we are here, if you come up to me and say, hey, I'm interested, we will chat. We will give you the best options that we can give you. And they could say, hey, you know what? I made a choice and I'm going with Drum Brigade. I'm going to still be their friend. You know, it's still <laughs> like, it's not, there's no, I don't sense it. And we don't want to have people feel that, oh, if you don't go with us, you can't go with them. Or the, the, the deal with uh, our, our artist is usually you're going to be with us until you decide to be with us. Right. And if something else comes along, who am I to tell you, no, you cannot go to, I don't know, the bigger names in, in, in the industry, you know? Right. Promark called and wants to give one of my guys an endorsement. They come to me and say, by all means, man, it's a big company. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's I love what we do. Yeah, man, and, I do too. We're very open. We're, yeah, it's, it's one of the cool things, like what happened on, Sunday, everybody sat at the table with um, with Preston from Vessel Drums. Everybody was there, and we all sat down, chatted, met a bunch of people that had already met us on social media, and it was fun. Yeah, there was no like, oh yeah, this is my kid, don't touch it. Everybody was like, hey, play it. You know, um, I have a really good rapport with Funky Phil. Shout out to my boy. Yes. You know, he's, he's an amazing guy. I, I, I love Phil. You, you guys oh, have no idea. Thanks, I, I, big, big respect to, to Phil. Uh, we all we all love him at Haram, you know, so it's it's fun. Yes. Everything Phil is, is part of the Haram as family. As, we're about, as long as we're talking about drums, we could spend, you know, we have to be pulled away by our wives. I'm sure. That's true. It's exactly. True. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah, I, dude, I totally hear what you're saying, and it's like that's the that's the beauty of this this like industry now is like together, you know, us, you guys, um, you know, Preston, like all of us, and, and some other guys, you know, like other these other companies that are like kind of in this now, this generation, we're all kind of working together to build a community with our stuff. Yeah. And, um, I, I know like some of the drum builders, you know, still have that like comp competitive nature and that backstabbing kind of negative stuff that goes on underlying between a lot of them. But, uh, you know, I love that all of us are kind of pushing that aside and being like, look, man, this is not really, it's, we're just, we're creating something that we as drummers, you know, you're a, you're an actual drummer. I'm an actual drummer, yeah. you know, 
Phil's an actual yeah. drummer. We're trying to create something and, and something that actual dudes like us want to be a part of and feel like that, that family feeling of like, Hey man, I belong, you know, I'm cool because I'm a Correct. drummer. And that's the, um, one of the, one of the coolest, biggest things that I see is that you're a drummer. I'm a drummer. Phil's a drummer. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, when we develop anything, when we developed our bag, for instance, all we could think about was the in and out of, of carrying your symbols, the in and out right. of holding your laptop, the in and out of like, and it's funny because they asked me, what kind of drummers are you endorsing? I endorse the guy that's, that's playing every night at the, at the hole in the wall. Right. We endorse the guy that's up at 5.45 in the morning on a Sunday morning to go play worship mm-hmm. for their local church. We are sending sticks across the, the country for the guy that's going to get on another tour bus or on a plane that's, that's going to go tour across the ocean. Right. You know, so it's we everything's in mind like how practical is this? Right. Are we are we, you know, building something for them? Dude, because I I can't how have I felt behind my kit. I can't you tell know? you how many like extensive conversations I've had with some of the like bigger like, you know, owners of some of these bigger companies or guys that have licensed their stuff to bigger companies or like guys that, you know, that are, you know, I don't know, building drums or, or, um, distributing stuff, products. Like I've talked to people where I'm like, you guys don't really understand like what we actually need. Like I'm an actual consumer, man. Like I'm the guy that jumps on a plane and goes and flies and I need something to hold my sticks or I need sticks that are going to, you know, that's part of the reason why I started making my own. And like, you know, it's, it's like, that kind of thing is so important. Like, that's why I bring that up. You being an actual drummer, you know what we need, you know, like me being an actual drummer. I know what drummers need. I don't want to go to guitar center and get whatever they're pushing on me. Like, and, and that's the, that's the, the coolest thing about this right now is like these companies that may not be like as big as Vic Firth or Promark and, and not that they don't make good products. Obviously they do like the proof is in, you know, if you've played them, they're great. But I've also, being a consumer, I've played your sticks. I've played my sticks. I've played Scorpion drumsticks. Like, and they're like really good. (laughs) Like, take it from me, dude. I'm a dude that's played a lot of stuff. Your stuff can compete with any of the big companies out there. You know, and it's like, thank you. Thank yeah, you. dude. And it's, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that because you're on the show. I'm saying that for real. Like it's, you guys have done the work, done the homework, you know, Phil endorses your company, you know? And it's like, the reason why is because the proof is in the product, man. It's like, you know what drummers actually need. You know what it's like we to, appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you guys know, you guys take into consideration the guys like us, you know, the real drummers out there that are actually working, but who, you know, aren't on these big gigs and not getting stuff for free, you know, and, and can't really go to guitar center and buy two bricks of sticks, you know, at full price, you know, and, and may not, and you're, and you may not know if you're getting their seconds because it's at guitar center. You don't know. You're not an A-level artist, you know? So that's important to a guy like me. Like a lot of people don't understand that, like, it's important to get a, a quality product that actually represents you, that you want to represent, but that you're actually using, like you're the you're the guy that's actually out there using the stuff and like of course. testing it to its limit, because you 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 know it's it, it's what it is. That's what position we're in. But I've had conversations with these dudes like, man, you have no idea. You're not a drummer. You don't know what we want. Your your whole thing is bottom line. Like, what's it going to cost me, and what how much am I going to make? You know, and that's why right. I go into Guitar Center and I'm forced to play your stuff when I don't want to play your stuff. I want to play this stuff. You know, somebody, somebody at one point, we were talking back and forth and they told me, why don't you go to that, that investor show, you know, yeah. um, where, where you show them your product and, and, you know, I'm not going to name drop cause yeah. you know, <laughs> but I mean, to have someone that's going to like the supply and demand and the money and all this, we don't care. Um, honestly, I'm not going to knock on guitar center because growing up in Mexico again, to me, crossing the border and, and being able to go to a guitar center was like Toys R Us for me right. back in the, in the mid nineties when I started playing drums. Mm-hmm. Um, I started playing drums at 18. So to wow. me, it was, it was 
pretty crazy to go to a guitar center. But now that I know better, all I see from guitar center is like, they are the Walmart of the music. Absolutely. Industry. <laughs> they destroyed. I, I came to North County in 2006 and I've honestly seen maybe three stores go down yeah. in North County. Totally. Um, I don't I'm sure you guys know old San Diego drum and percussion. Yeah. Um, and I'm so thankful for stores like, like Ed at drum flip, yep. you know, because they, they keep the, the, I don't know, the humanity of, Dude, it's... of musicianship of musicians in it rather than, you know, guys that are, you, you walk into a guitar center and yes, they are very knowledgeable because they hire knowledgeable people. But the ones that are super knowledgeable come out as snobby to a certain yeah, extent. That is and, correct. And it, it, it scares a kid. Imagine a 14, 15 year old kid that maybe has chops already, but gets discouraged by these dudes that are playing blast beats, you know, <laughs> yeah. at 215 BPMs, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. scary. It's scary. If I were if I were a fifteen year old kid and I and I talked to this music major guy that happens to be the manager that day in the drum department, I'd, I'd be furious because I wouldn't understand anything that we would be talking to me. Yeah. You know, about, well, I have a, I have a whole know. soapbox about guitar center that I won't get of on course. right now. <laughs> of course, I think of they're course. very convenient and like, it's cool. I mean, I, I mean, I, I have to admit that like, you know, from time to time I have to go in there and buy stuff, you know, well, it's yeah. just what it is. It's, it's convenient. I have to go to Walmart, even though I don't like going to Walmart, you know, to get stuff. Of sometimes. course. But, but yeah, like, it's amazing that like Ed found a loophole to have a successful business and sell. Like he moves drums like crazy and other products right. and, like crazy dude. And it's like, he's local. I mean, I live in Vista and he's like right down the street from me. I can ride my bike. Of there. It's just, it's dope. Yeah, man. It's really, really cool. But it's, it's funny. It's funny that, um, I remember meeting Ed when he was still, um, moving drums from his garage oh yeah, yeah me, me too. too yeah <laughs> up in up in san marcos so i yeah. remember meeting him and and you know when he first started showing me his stash of uh you know collectible symbols and stuff like that and all of a sudden look at where we we have a drum store right <laughs> in, yeah. in north county so yeah, that's crazy it's it's fun yeah are you still buying and selling drums vintage stuff and all kinds of yeah. other stuff so what we do, what we do as a, that's kind of like our bread and butter right now. Um, what we do is we purchase um, mid um, level drum sets, okay. clean them up, restore them, rehead them, make them as clean as possible. And we resell them in Mexico. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Most of our drums, I've even picked up drums from Ed um, that I've sent down there. So we have a complete system, kind of like a, Facebook Marketplace okay. group, nice that has over twenty thousand people, I believe. Wow! And what? all we do is, is, is post. <laughs> all we do is post, and uh, we we try to get um, you know something that's that's durable. Our bread and butter is those uh, PDP mm -hmm. uh, Ensenada kits, those kinds of things. Nice. You know um, that are that are not expensive, and then the people don't have to pay um extreme prices that they cannot afford down there yeah you know so we are very reasonable uh with our pricing and um i try to buy drum sets from la so i take trips to la maybe three times a week wow that's my that's my um uh, my job uh, and i also work for a church okay so yeah so that's that's what we do we buy sell and restore drum sets and then we find the the occasional gem that has to go on ebay man. you know nice that's so, dope man that's like dude i thought i went to la a lot <laughs> that yeah. would drive me oh, nuts, no dude. Dude, i i drive to, my my poor car has seen uh a quarter of a million miles wow, <laughs> wow. right now yeah wow. i'm at 254 i think right now oh on my, my gosh Scion. that's crazy. Dude, my Scion is a trooper dude that's a great that's a great commercial for them, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a cool. solid car. <laughs> I I that I don't mind because that car has seen it. Wow. You know? That's everything crazy. hurts, everything scratched on it, you know, because it's seen at least in in certain occasions up to five drum sets in there. Damn. I, like, <laughs> I open drum set drums and put them 
put a drums inside of other drums to make it fit. Wow. I will put a, a bass drum as a as a passenger in front with me. It's pretty fun, dude. <laughs> If that doesn't scream other, like drum drum community, like a drummer's drummer, there's nothing yeah, else that screams. That is a drummer's drummer. <laughs> and then it's it's funny because uh, the the biggest part, obviously, I, I seek um, monetary compensation because it's my livelihood. This mm. is what I what I do, right? But to me, the biggest thing is the the adrenaline of the find. Oh yeah! Like oh my god, <laughs> I walked into this garage and. I'm thinking that I'm going to get just a little five piece Ludwig and all of a sudden it's full of K symbols. Oh you know? yeah. And I don't, and I didn't know that, you know? So I, that's the, the coolest thing or the people would be like, Oh yeah, but uh, I have another snare in the back and all of a sudden it's like a, a collectible Ludwig, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. That is the, we, uh, for a, for a minute, we called ourselves uh drum pickers. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing yeah 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 i'm sure you probably so, find like some barn finds with like an old person or something that's like well i got this kit in 1956 it's probably not worth anything and it's yeah. just like a beautiful like vintage <laughs> you know like ludwig I, or something i remember a, a quick one i went to somewhere near lax uh this old old guy he had a Crabby auto snare. Oh my god! That wasn't even considered a Crabby auto yet. It was a, a, it, was a oh. it was a metal edge. It was a top edge snare that was originally designed by Crabby auto, and it ha it would look new, but it was a good thirty years old. What? And the guy would not let go of it. I was like, oh. "How much do you want?" And how much do you want? And he would not let go of it because oh. he sold he sold me two full kits. Oh. And I said, "Well, throw in that snare." He's like, "I can't. I can't." <laughs> he was an older gentleman. Was, was, I've seen some pretty rare stuff. That's cool. I mean, not not as rare as what we saw at the drum show on Sunday, but yeah, that yeah. Was some crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's dope, man. So, um, so I guess like that's really like I just I love like your whole story and like what you're doing, like your your involvement with Haram as an artist rep and like. All, like how that whole start thing started, and like I think you just got such a cool story with what you do with buying and selling and bringing bringing quality drums to Mexico, and like I've probably played some of your kits out there, like you know, like that you've brought over there. It's 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 crazy because I lost count at three hundred drum sets. Wow, what? already? That's I've been crazy. doing this for about four years, almost four years. So um, wow. it's it's funny how. Uh, at one point, about four years ago, I was like, ah, I think I need to stop playing the drums. And then I had an accident, destroyed my shoulder. Oh, no. And while I, while I was in rehab for my shoulder, um, I ended up selling my personal kit. And then I sold it to some guy in Mexico. And then that guy's like, hey, you should sell me all your drums. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, I buy them and resell them. And one thing led to another. Uh, I met a, a group of dudes that, that import drums into Mexico. And for a minute, I was selling them to them directly. And here I am. Wow. Um, I met the, the creator of Haram that way. And um, now it's it's really funny because it's it's it snowballed yeah. into uh, me repping Haram, um, being endorsed by, by Dominion Symbols. Shout out to my friends at Dominion. Nice. Um, and and Vessel took me under their wing. So, I mean, I'm super thankful. Yeah, super thankful. That's you guys cool. have no idea. I mean, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. A lot of sleepless nights. Yeah. Um, but also the ability to just talk to anybody, you know. Yeah. No, that's cool. Like, you lose nothing by talking to someone. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like it's. The thing, the thing that's like really great that Phil and I always talk about is that, you know, um, like we don't really want to play anything that we don't want to support. Like when I was younger, I just wanted anybody to like help me out. You know, I was like touring a lot and stuff and I needed help, but it was like none, a lot of the companies wouldn't pay us any mind, you know, but now it's like we kind of get to choose who we want to play. Like, you know, Phil is so stoked on Vessel Drums, right, Phil? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, and like, you know, we love, I mean, obviously we love Preston and we're, he's, you know, a big part of our show and stuff, even though I don't, I don't play Vessel Drums, but like all my friends do. And I think they're dope drums too, you know? And so, 
Um, yes. It's cool. We play what we want. And like, I love that. Like that, that makes us, us, you know, these companies help us to be who we are, you know, on and off the stage. That's dope. So you find yeah. a sense of identity after a while. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah, very cool. We, uh, we are, we're just, I, and it's everything's local. I, I can't stress that enough. Um, and if you become friends with some of these people and you don't personally play them, that doesn't mean you cannot support them. Like at least show up to their events. Um, your friend's band is not going to take off if you don't go and buy a ticket mm. and tell other friends, you know, yeah. you just gotta be, you gotta be supportive. Totally. Life gets in the way. I get it, but you have to be supportive. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. So are you, you down to do some, um, rapid fire Q and a with us? Sure. All right. This let's... is, this is fun. <laughs> All right. right on, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> All right. So we got some rapid fire Q&A questions for you. They're not really meant to be like thought out. They're just meant to be like, just give us some like the best answer. They're supposed to be quick answers too. Like, so um, some of them are repeat questions that we've had on this, this show before. We got to come up with some new ones, Phil. Yeah, <laughs> we do. <laughs> Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the first one. Uh, che, what's the weirdest fan moment you've had, like at either like at church? I'm sure there's probably not any weird things that happen at church, or like at Nam show or something like that. Something weird that's happened at Nam. Well, uh, there was there was one. Obviously, I got to take a picture with Sugarfoot. Oh, that's cool. yes. But my my all time favorite was meeting my my like, and I literally melted in front of the guy. This 300 pound bearded guy melting in front of another drummer was I got to meet Abe Cunningham of the Deftones. Oh, okay. And, and the guy offered me a sip of his beer. I didn't take it, but it was so cool. <laughs> the guy was so awesome. You know, and, and, and I literally fangirled over the dude and my brother's like, calm down, calm down. I, I'm a huge fan of that guy. Uh, yeah, so that's awesome. I, that's the weirdest one. That's cool. So uh, yeah, that's a different take. I, I didn't think that it would be like, uh, a fan experience that you had with being a fan with somebody. I thought it was like somebody came to your booth and was like, I'm going to take these sticks or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing something out there. I oh, have... well, um, <laughs> Brian Fraser Moore showed up to our booth nice. and said, I'm endorsed by Vader, but I, these are fire, bro. And I Whoa. like melted. <laughs> Brian Fraser Moore. I mean, come That's on. That's awesome. Dude. That's dope. You know? That's dope. <laughs> yeah. I told you, man, I tried to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a similar experience when I, I met Chris Dave. He's like my favorite drummer ever. He's everybody's right. favorite drummer. But like, I, I try to keep it cool, you know? And it was like probably my like third or fourth time like meeting him. And like, so at this point it was like, oh, what's up, man? How's it going, man? And I was just like, bro, my favorite drummer right here. And he's like, shut up, man. You're my favorite drummer. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, shut up, fool. Like, and he doesn't, he doesn't, I'm sure he's never heard me play or anything. But like, it was right. just like right. funny to f see a dude that I've like, I've, thought he was like my favorite drummer since like I yeah know, like the 90s i thought he was the dopest that's, thing and like that's so cool so yeah for him to just be like shut up man no i'm not like you know like he's so used to hearing right. that you know it's like so funny but phil weirdest fan moment or like something that's happened to you like that's weird on a gig oh man i don't know shoot i mean i got to hang out with dave garibaldi before dang he oh like, wow he came through uh the school i was going to and he was there for a bit, and I got to chill out with him. Yeah, super, Didn't you meet super <laughs> nice guy. Really humble, cool, chill. Damn, no cool. ego. He's like just awesome. Didn't you meet Dave Weckle too? Some one time. <laughs> um. Yeah, I met I, I met Dave Weckle. <laughs> yep. Yeah, great drummer. He's great a great drummer. drummer. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. it. <laughs> he wasn't very nice to Phil, or he wasn't well, very no, nice in general. I'm sorry, I'm saying that. I know he didn't. But. He did. He did. He wasn't mean to me or anything. Yeah, he was just a great drummer. That's it. Yeah, he's a great drummer. Okay, anyways, anyways, <laughs> anyways, I had a weird fan experience one time. Um, this is kind of like borderline where it was awkward. Like, I was, this was like years ago when I was playing in the Agri Lights, and this chick walked up at one of our shows, and then she's like, she, I don't remember if it was like, can you sign this, or if it was like, can you put this, you can put this sticker, can you, she said, she said, we had stickers or something, and she's like, I'm having all the band place a sticker on me. And then I was like, 
so she comes up to me. They're like, hey, she wants you to put a sticker. She's going to take a picture with the stickers. And then she like, she's fully clothed, but she had some giant, she was well endowed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yeah, so you can place the sticker anywhere. And then she like pushes her like chest to me. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> what am I supposed to, like, I'm like married. Like it was, yeah, it was complicated. I'm like, dude, I don't know what to do. And so like, I remember I like lightly placed it on her shirt, like, <laughs> but didn't like, you know, cop a feel or anything. Like I try to be respectful and just like tap it like on her chest, you know, like <laughs> above her, you know, areas. <laughs> and it was the stinking awkwardest moment ever for me, dude. Cause I was like, I'm so awkward. I don't know what to do. Like, I'm not comfortable with like, you know, I'm not like some rock guy that's going to just like grab your boobs and place a sticker on him. And so I didn't, that was my awkward moment. <laughs> well, that's, that's a good one. That's, that's pretty awkward. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Phil, what do you got? What, another one? Yeah. An, oh, an awkward moment? No, 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 no. Like another question. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we should call this a uh, slow fire. Yeah, slow, slow fire, fire, yeah, fire right? Slow, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, you're about to be executed. Oh, what is your last meal? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I got to have a five in spice uh chicken pad thai really? i gotta sweat before i'm dead <laughs> yes uh it's one of, it's a really weird thing i'm really good at eating spicy food it's ridiculous wow but when it comes down to eating chicken pad thai i ask for literally like a five on an average but i almost dumped the whole uh <laughs> spicy tray into my plate <laughs> Yes. Um, it's kind of weird. I'm not trying to prove anything, but if I'm not sweating out of, under my eyes, yeah. it's weird. It's a thing that I have for chicken pad thai. It has to be spicy. It's one of my favorite meals. That's I dope. think that I would ask for chicken pad thai. That's cool. That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. Solid. Yeah. Me and Phil both. Well, Phil went with Mexican food, right? Well, that was last time. Last time. So now, you're, okay, a week or a couple of weeks later, you're getting executed. What are you eating, Phil? Um, I th I'm thinking maybe an eggplant parm sandwich. Really? Yeah. You're just hungry, right? Wow. Now. I think I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife was bringing it up the other day, and then we didn't go and get that, and I'm regretting it. No. And I want, I want an eggplant parm, I'm, like a bomb one. I'm going hardcore, dude. Like I'm sticking to my guns, and I'm going straight up New York extra large New York pizza with pepperoni and I don't even Ninja eat Turtle that. style. Yeah. Oh wow. Dude. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I don't like I'm vegan and Phil's vegetarian and like so I'm I don't eat that. But if I'm getting killed tomorrow, I'm getting executed, my last meal, that's what I'm going with. Yeah. <laughs> I mean there's no there's no wrong in that. Yeah. Who's yeah. gonna judge you for eating animal? <laughs> exactly. Like nobody. That, I mean, yeah. And if they do here uh I, I can only picture your your headstone. Here lies a traitor from the vegan community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the last meal he had, he sold out. <laughs> he sold out, yeah. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Let me get another one here. Uh, okay, tell us three things people may not know about you. Oh, wow. Um, I love this one because Phil and I always have different ones every week. I got to start thinking. When, about when I was a kid... I grew up with uh, people from America bringing uh, food supplies and everything to, to give to the poor. Uh, for many, many summers, I spent um, sorting out food in my living room with my family to give to the homeless. Wow. And a lot of time in the landfill, uh, going and trying to be a, a good Christian and spreading the gospel with my family, mm -hmm. but literally in the landfill. Wow. So that was one of the things that I grew up and uh, uh, it taught me a lot of uh, giving. Um, I'm That's not, dope. I don't usually talk about this kind of stuff because why, you know? Yeah. But I grew up learning how to give to those less fortunate in really extreme conditions. Man, you went um, deep with it. Like super deep. I'm like, yeah, man, I really like secretly like chocolate or something. <laughs> like I learned how to give at well, a young age. <laughs> um, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you this one is, is deep, obviously, because I don't talk about all the things that I because that kind of stuff you don't really have to boast about. Right, right. Um, but um a really weird one. Okay. My biggest guilt pleasure song. Well, there's two, and somebody on YouTube decided to mash them up. 
Okay. Is Britney Spears toxic? <laughs> yeah. And Taylor Swift, look what you made me do. Yes. Oh, that is a good that one to is know about. Exactly <laughs> Phil's favorite songs too. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a five foot eleven, three hundred pound guy with a giant beard. <laughs> Almost forty, and I love those two songs. Dude. Like, I don't know. Oh man, I just picture I you. Know, a, guys. I picture I, you I driving agree. a car to L.A. filled with drums, <laughs> just rocking Britney Spears. <laughs> right Dude, now, it's that's... just one. Of, that's that's another one. Uh, what would be a third one? The third one's always um, the hardest. Yeah, <clears throat> not a lot of people know. Maybe some on my social media do know. I met my wife on MySpace. Really? Yes. Yeah, that's cool. living in Tijuana, and I I remember. Um, and this is, uh, this is not trying to go too deep, but I remember the night before I had the friend request from her, I said, God, please send me a wife. Oh, no what? way. <laughs> <laughs> send me a wife. Get, get, get me all the distractions away. Just let me focus on, on, on finding a wife. And then boom, I met my wife. And a year later I was living in the North County and I was married. Wow. So, you, your wife's got a cool life. She's got a really cool was, story too, with like her, like yeah, you know, yes. all the stuff that she's done. Your wife's absolutely beautiful, man. You guys are gonna have a baby Thank soon. You. That's so cool, dude. Yeah, yeah. We now. we are past due our due date. Our oh due date gosh. was yesterday. Woo. <laughs> this baby, this baby's over cooking right now. Wow. Um, no way. This baby, for all of those that don't know me and don't know our story, uh, this is a miracle baby. We've been married eleven years. Oh wow. So this is uh, our first baby that's come to full term. Um, last year we had an unfortunate miscarriage. Uh, we were very vocal and very adamant about it. Uh, we are okay. Uh, we just kept pushing the envelope because we really wanted to be parents. So here we cool. are just waiting for our young boy, wow. Silas. That's yeah. awesome, it's, man. It's, it's, it could, yes, it could guys, literally uh, happen today. It could happen today. We're on our way to the doctor. We have an appointment in about an hour. Wow. So uh, we're going to discuss what's going to happen. Uh, what are they doing? What What do they recommend? Dude, We've you been and Phil, man. So exciting. <laughs> yeah, we are, we're stoked. Um, first baby. Man, that's so. cool. Phil's about to have a baby, too, next month. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 My second. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome second second why one. did i not know this <laughs> <laughs> crazy I, man I, that, show, that shows the kind of friend i am right Phil? <laughs> no no i'm not i don't know i'm not super vocal about it i guess man that's yeah, well congratulations bro that's yeah, really thanks, awesome man. man congratulations to you too yeah man. seriously that's really cool i'm thank so happy you. for you thank guys. you it's, a, it's been a journey it's been it's been a wonderful journey so do do me and phil do we need to have more three things people don't know people like know like nine things about us now all right it's kind of funny though that we, <laughs> when we have to come up with new ones every time all right what's my okay so three things people don't know do you want to go first or you want me to go i'll go first okay go for it okay many people probably don't know that i used to work as a professional mover Ooh. yeah <laughs> yeah i used to move houses households wow and drive trucks i can uh, see that but wow. it, but um, it was, yeah, it was, I was, I, that was to support my music because that, that was a time where I, all I wanted to do was play in bands I liked and not worry about the money. Mm. And it was fun. But I do not miss moving furniture <laughs> at all. Not even a little bit. Yeah, not I would miss that. Yeah, that was back in Philly. Wow. Um, so that's one thing. Another, okay. I, I, one time, all right, another one. One time I drank an entire bottle of whiskey on an airplane. What? Yeah. Whoa. How? <laughs> uh, well, I, Wait, do not, I, do, I don't remember landing. <laughs> Wait, how? I mean, this fool. How did you get it into the plane? Um, this You're one, not a, I bought it at, wow. it at a duty-free shop in the airport. Yeah. They normally, okay. like, seal it up, though, so you can't. It was yeah, it was a while ago, but dang, Phil, no wonder you don't drink anymore very much. I try not to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um. So that was interesting. <laughs> wow. That I can't top that. I don't know. What's the third? Wow. One? The third one's always a hard one. I know. We should make another yeah, one. That's why it's a good question. Um, I've chopped down probably 
20, 25 avocado trees with a chainsaw. Wow. You know, avocados are gold out here. Yeah. They're expensive, oh, yeah. though. They, they need it. They are thirsty trees. Oh, man. Okay. Here's my three. One, I used to work. I, I stole yours, but I used to work as a flooring <laughs> installer, as a carpet installer. Um, and I like worked my way all the way up to where I was like basically a contractor and I had like 20 guys working for me and I had to do payroll and all that stuff. It was a horrible job. I had the worst bosses I've ever had in my life in that job. Wow. Um, I did a lot of construction work, but that was horrible. <laughs> um, two, a lot of people don't know that I Wait, let me see. My first professional gig was a country western gig. Yes. Straight oh. up. Straight up. Yeah. 14, 15 years old playing country western. Did you have to wear the hat? <clears throat> yes. Cowboy hat? Um, I kept fighting it, man. I was into ska and I wanted to not wear that. And um so I fought it and tried to wear a trucker hat and it didn't work. And finally, like on some of the bigger gigs, I had to wear a straight up cowboy hat, dude. Oh, straight man. up. And I was like, I Did can't you play in the booth. Wear the scarf on your neck. No, <laughs> I think I used to wear like a bolo tie. The, oh God! <laughs> you know what though? Like, what's crazy is like I hated life, dude. I I hated. I was so so happy playing gigs, but I hated playing country. But then, as the years went on, I kind of grew a liking to playing that. Like, it was really very traditional country, you know, and um, it was very disciplined. It was like. Very like everybody thinks, oh, that's easy music to play. It's not, dude. It's very disciplined and like they're very adamant on making it feel right. It's like anything else. Like, yeah, I can play a funk beat, but if it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. And it's the same thing in that scene too. It's like they're really adamant on like you know making your your side stick sound very crisp and clean and perfect, like you know, and just like all kinds of weird things with the feel of the music and really cool. So. And then my third thing, this is a doozy. You guys are learning a lot about me today. <laughs> wow. My third but, thing is I was once married before. Oh, yeah. Dun, dun, oh. Dun. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> out of the hat. What's going on? <laughs> so this is my second marriage. We're going to be celebrating 13 years next month. Or no, next week. Next week. Uh, my first marriage did not work out. And I don't want to talk about her because she doesn't deserve the credit on this show. But it didn't work out. Um, we got married very young. And long story short, I'm filling you guys in. <laughs> long story short, my wife used to like to play a lot when I was out on tour. So it didn't work out. Uh, and that's my three. <laughs> Sweet. Wow. <laughs> I just dropped a oh, bomb on the drum on a dark show. note. I know. I know. I should have like, said that was her first I don't know if you continue one. talking about anything else. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But the thing is, let's bring it around to positive, is I've never been happier than I am now with my wife in 13 years. Yeah. Oh, by, like, she like is amazing. Nothing. Yeah. She's pretty cool, man. She's pretty cool. And she's like, she's and, and back to the, back going back onto the country gig, uh, I can only picture you wearing like a Pharrell Williams hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can think of you wearing. Well, and I, I was don't like, know why? <laughs> I just, you said you said country, and I had to wear the hat. All I can think like an Arby's type hat. Yes. <laughs> why I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was basically like, I was at fifteen. I was a lot smaller and like skinnier, and like every cowboy hat looked like that scene on Dumb and Dumber where he's like, Oh yeah, <laughs> goes oh, to yeah. the store. Right. <laughs> he's like buying just the essentials, and he comes out with a Dude. giant cowboy hat. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, you got a doctor's appointment soon, so let's move on quickly to Would You Rather and wrap it up. All right? All right. All right, here we go. Bill's <laughs> favorite one. Yes. <laughs> Bill can't get over Dumber those high pitched voices. Dumber Dumber Love it. This he loves weird it. scoopy bays. Uh, oh, it's just good. Um, would you rather tacos or burritos? Oh, that's not easy, man. You're talking to the Mexican that grew up in Tijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I heard I heard burritos weren't even like Mexican. They're just like American. No, they're not. That's a that's a Tex Mex thing, I believe. But here's the thing if I'm in my hometown, mm -hmm. I will never eat a burrito again. So tacos, if oh. I'm in 
Tijuana. Okay. I cool. don't every I've tried every taco place in the book in North County. Mm-hmm. Nobody makes tacos like the original Tijuana tacos. They can't. Oh man. It's just a thing. I don't know if it's the diesel smoke in the air. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if it's the <laughs> the traffic and the dirt and the whatever it is. The 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 way a, a Tijuana taco is made is just uncanny. When when so, I used to uh, eat tacos. meat, I was, oh man. It was tacos. There's nothing better than that. Tacos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm born and raised Californian. If you can't tell by the way I talk, and I'm kind of a burrito <laughs> guy, man. I love tacos, though. I just love yeah. Mexican food. It's my favorite food in the whole world. I do too. Right. It's yeah. the best. It's so simple and so good. Yep. I'm just. There's ugh. no. I. Everybody tells me, oh, don't go to that Mexican place or whatever. They're not that great. And I'm like, I always order the standard, mm-hmm. so there's no way you can screw up seasoned beef, yeah. guacamole. You know, it just you can't. Yeah. You know, so let's just do that <laughs> burrito. You know, it's so Fine. good. Oh, I love yeah. Mexican yeah. food, dude. dude. I'm hungry. I know. I'm. I'm. St- I remain on Team Burrito as well. Yeah, I, I, love, I tacos, love tacos. Yeah, but yeah, there's this place I'm going to on Friday in T in TJ. Um, Vera Verde, I think. Mm. Uh, it's right. Wow. It's right across the street from BCB Brewery or Tasting Room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That place, man. Oh, they have these vegan tacos that blew my doors off. They were so good, and they were vegan, and it was just amazing. I can't yes. wait to go I've, on Friday. I've only had one uh, one place that that sells vegan tacos. Mm-hmm. And they're at the Sunset Market in Oceanside. Oh yeah, uh, that's only El, El Veganito or something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, they they're Veganito. they're all vegan Mexican food, aren't they? Yeah, 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 they're all vegan, and their tacos are great. Oh man, my my, I've had them. My wife loves them. I mean, it's I'm not I don't I don't knock on veganism because I'll try anything. Yeah, as long as it's good, I'll try anything. You know, so vegan tacos, I don't mind. I'm yeah. pretty sure they can do some pretty cool stuff. Well, I I love like carne asada and pollo asado and all that stuff, but I just yeah. my stomach my stomach can't take it. So that's why I'm vegan. It's yeah. health reasons, not because of preference. I used to love okay. eating, eating carne asada burritos. That was like my go to. Your thing. <laughs> that was my thing. Uh, all right, Phil, give us give us one. Oh man, okay. Um, camping or hotel? Oh. Ooh, um, even though I I grew up uh, racing Baja, I grew up in in, in TJ. Um, I would go camp out and all that stuff. I hated it. <laughs> I would, eh, dude, I'm a city guy. I I don't care. Yeah, I like the country, but for a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, but outdoor stuff and everything, not a fan. I like a good bed. I like a good bathroom. A good shower? Uh, no. <laughs> Hotel. I think I'm kind of either one. I like. I think there's a time and a place for camping. I love camping, but I love a good, clean hotel, too. You got to choose one. A decent, <laughs> decent camping will work if you have the proper stuff. Yeah. You know, like a 35-foot uh, toy hauler with a shower. <laughs> I'm fine. Back in the day, man, I used to love camping, dude. That was like my – that's all I would do. But it depends. Like, okay, like, look, like if I'm on tour – I'm not camping, dude. I've been offered tours where they're like, yeah, man, we're going to camp. I'm like, nah, I ain't doing that. No. It's <laughs> so it sounds like your team hotel then. Yeah, team if hotel. If I have to choose yeah. one, yeah, I have to be like, it's a, it's a camping trip and like, okay, I'm it's cool. Like, yeah, I'm, I, I can't choose one, Phil. I love it. I love, <laughs> I love camping, but I love a nice hotel too. One, okay. One of the things is like the, for Nam. Mm-hmm. I could do the commute every day, go back and forth. I live in North Oceanside. Yeah. We booked a hotel because all I want to do is after Nam, just walk to the hotel and just knock out. Yes. You know? So, team hotel. All right. That's good. Phil, what are you? I th- yeah, I'm, I think I'm on team hotel as well. <laughs> there was a time where I, I loved camping a lot, but I don't know. Maybe it's just getting older, but... <laughs> Yeah, I like a friggin' bed. Yeah, with clean sheets. I do not bring a bed condom everywhere like Corey, <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, yeah. I like a bed, a comfy bed, clean sheets, air conditioning. You know. All right. A shower. The shower is usually cleaner than my shower at home. Yeah. You're just pampered. That's all. We got it, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just honest, Corey. All right. Uh, single pedal or double pedal? Ooh. Single pedal all the way. Me I too. don't see the need for me to own an extra piece of expensive equipment, you know, because I'm not going to use it. Yeah. I play, I play contemporary worship. Mm-hmm. I can do a couple of triplets and pull some fast, stuff here and there but it's unnecessary for me yeah um if somebody invited me to play in a rock band or something then i would see the use but i'm really goofy with my left i'm yeah. really goofy so i i i could hardly keep tempo with my hat so <laughs> <laughs> it's it's single pedal all the way um you know and yeah single pedal i'm a i'm exactly the same i don't if you want to hear me really sound like I can't play drums at all, put a double kick on the <laughs> right. I, I cannot do it, man. Like I'm so terrible. And I used to have, so when I was younger, when I was in high school, like during the country Western days, I was hardcore dude, double bass, like all about it. And then I did my first shed with a, with a really good friend of mine, um, Jules Rodriguez. He actually, he plays with Gloria Trevi in the, um, he's, oh, yeah. he's still like a really great top level like drummer um anyways i shed with him when we were in um high school and he was doing everything that i was doing with one pedal that i was doing with two and i that set my whole thing where it was like okay from now on if i can't do it with one then i don't need to do it and then that helped me build my foot so now i'm kind of still of that mind where i wish i could play double bass like I wish I could play like Matt Garska or something, but like I just can't. It's not the style of music I do. It's not my thing, and I'm really terrible at it. So I I stick to single. Nice. It's like it's like you guys are familiar with a math equation that you can't really resolve. Right. That's me watching. I don't know the Rev from Event Sevenfold. Okay. Back yeah. In, you know, it's it's it's. I see the equation. I don't know how to resolve it, so right. I don't even bother. Right. Single. Pedal, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I stick to what I know. Funky Phil, is there any double bass in like funk music and soul music? <laughs> <laughs> I do more than just that. But I yeah, I'm st- I'm on team single pedal too. Yeah. I mean, I have mad respect for double kick stuff and I know yeah. there's dudes that use it in all sorts of situations that are not metal, but I uh I've never <laughs> I've never found myself in those situations. Right. I just I feel like we're gonna get haters for saying that, and yeah. like I I totally love like I, the the level of how these guys are using that tool these days is like really grown and it's incredible. Yeah, I just can't do it. I su- I'm terrible, <laughs> terrible at, at it. I'm so bad. And yeah. like all the gigs I play, I don't really need it. So like I just stick to single. It's not that I hate double pedals, and I'm like any drummer that uses them is cheating. That's not what it's about. It's just. I suck at it. I suck at it. Yeah. I wish I could be better it's, at it. It's the, the ability to separate your brain into four limbs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as accurately and fast as you, you're going to need to. We have this kid that we endorse uh, on Haram. His, na- his name is Greg DeGracia. Mm-hmm. He plays in a band called Mandala. This kid just broke his hand. Oh, no. And he's doing double, he's doing double pedal um, stuff with his left hand. What? on one hand oh and he's God. tearing it up and i'm like what are you doing is there a, like a ghost guy <laughs> behind you hitting other drums what's going on <laughs> you know uh that's just not me but no i mean the art of the double pedal is beautiful yeah that's really cool well i think that's gonna wrap it up for us on these questions um you got to possibly go have a baby today yeah, yeah. <laughs> between your busy I, schedule um which is crazy um what's okay i do have a, a general question for you what's the first song or maybe you haven't thought about this what's the first song you want your your newborn child to hear i always think about this oh, oh that's a hard this one is, this is uh, I, I gotta give it a, a a few seconds but um oof that's that's, that's really deep, tough huh? because I have a <laughs> I have a slew of songs and this is a this is probably a worship song. Uh-huh. Um, 
this song is called This Is Our God. Okay. Um, and uh, the reason why I use that song, and I display, it's a perfect explanation uh, in my belief of what God did on the cross mm-hmm. in plain sight, in black and white. There's no uh, gimmick around the song. It just tells you exactly what happened and why we believe in what we believe. That's cool. Pretty much. I never. I, I would want my son to hear that song. Yeah, that that's song cool. um, moves me completely. So I wouldn't yeah, even have thought I'm, of that. I could, I could give him a million songs that I'm a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a huge fan of a song called Beauty School from Deftones. Mm-hmm. And that's the song that I used to try out my in-ears when I was trying out in-ears. Yeah. <laughs> but, cool. um, but I think This Is Our God from Hillsong. Okay. Is, is the song that I want my son to hear. That's a good choice too. If you're going to be raising him, you know, like, you know, according to your faith and, and stuff like that, that's a great choice. Of course. So yeah, yeah. I, I would probably do the same. Um, something like that, you know, like, um, or, you know, I thought like, uh, my, my buddy Joe sang, he brought a guitar into the hospital and sang, isn't she lovely to his daughter uh, when she was born. Oh, wow. And I was like, dude, that's dope. He's like, when she came out, and I held her for the first time. I sang "Isn't She Lovely" to her. Oh, that's good. Like, that's good, man. That's, that's the first that's awesome. piece of music she ever heard. You know, that's dope. So I thought about something like that, but I don't have any kids. So, <laughs> but I always think, yeah. like, dude, what if you like get in the car, and like the first, like you, you don't, you're like nervous putting your your newborn baby in the car, and then you turn the key, and like the first thing that comes on is like. Michael Bolton or something like, or like, <laughs> like Kenny G or something. And that's the and first Rwanda. song they ever hear in their life. They're just starting their life. And that's the first song they that's hear. That's a smooth start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that is funny. I want this to be planned out. Like, Hey, I want to be able to tell my kid the first song you ever heard was this, you know, and dude, right. <laughs> it, it never worked out the way we planned it. I, I should be having like um, college kids by now. Most of my friends from high school yeah. are already sending their kids to college, and I'm over here. Look at me, I'm starting. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing know? wrong with so, that, though, man. <laughs> everything, everything we we think we plan, you know. Yeah. What if uh, What if I get in the car and for whom the bell tolls come <laughs> exactly. from Metallica? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe I your son know. will grow up to be like just super dope. <laughs> maybe right? he'll grow up to have terrible time and not be able to play drums very good because he, the first drummer he hears oh. is Lars. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. I, I 100% concur. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right, Jay, I will, man. I will, oh, you go guys ahead, are go ahead. awesome. Go ahead, go Thank ahead. Thank you for, for having me. I appreciate the time. Of course. Uh, Jack, oh, I know. Of all days, today I'm wearing my drum brigade shirt. Nice, yes. nice, nice, nice. We so, appreciate that, dude. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Congratulations on congratulations on everything you're doing, and also you know bringing life into this world, bringing yes. a new life in this world. That's awesome, man. Hey, wish me luck. That's well, all I can ask for. Right on, man. Hey, we'll have you on soon again, and uh, thanks for coming right. on, dude. It's a pleasure. All right, Thank man. you guys. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was awesome, dude. Dude, he's such a nice guy. Totally. We say that every time. But yeah. like, dude, we just we pick good guests on the show. What can we say? Yeah. I'm we, waiting for us to just have like the worst guest ever. Like some real mean, egotistical. Yeah. And I just have to like get on my soapbox about them. To their to their face. To their ear like, holes. My soapbox this week is you. <laughs> No, no, dude, that Chase, guy is Chase the man. He's, I love that dude, man. He's, he's one of the most positive, nice people. He's just gonna I've say met that, in yeah. the city, totally, totally supportive, positive. Like he deserves all the positive things that happen to him, and like he's just centered and he's a good dude, man. I like that guy. Um, I once again forgot how to or to ask him how people can get a hold of him. So we'll have to say that right now. Um, I believe it's Haram, H A R A M. Yep. They make awesome drumsticks, yes, just saying. And other products. I mean, they're good. <laughs> no, he makes awesome. Dude, I've, I honestly, I use, they sent me some. I used them. I used them on gigs. They lasted forever. They're great stuff. Great stuff. Um, he has other products too cymbal bags, like I mentioned, drumsticks, stick bags, yep. um, practice pads, t shirts. Uh, what else do they got? They do drum keys too. 
Maybe. I don't know. They're always coming out with new stuff. They always it's got cool. new stuff. I yeah. always end up getting something at NAMM. Yeah. And then off a, off a J. They have a really good artist program. Like if you're a pro drummer and um you're looking for um like quality products um made by drummers. Um they're like they're they're pretty big out here, but they're like massive in Mexico, dude, and like Latin America. They're like they endorse a ton of dudes out there. It's really yeah. cool. So um is it haram.com? Haramdrums.com? I can't remember. Gosh. Yeah, Bear look, with. look them up. Yeah, just Haram look them up. Haram Music on Instagram. There it is, yeah. Um, Haram Music on Instagram. I think it's Haram Music, haram-music.com. Um, reach out to them. Go buy their stuff. Support like a local company and, um, you know, all that good stuff. It's going to be great. Um, so, yeah, support. You, I mean, you guys can hear. Like, you're supporting not only a good company, but, like, a good dude. Like, he's one of us, you know? So, that's important to us. Anyways, that has been this week's Drum Brigade podcast. We had a soapbox. Do not show up on my gig, Phil, and act like you're going to take it over. It won't go good for Dude, you. Dude, I'm going to come sit in. I'm going to bring a 10-inch piccolo <laughs> snare drum, but I'm going to tune it super low. That's what you do, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to play... Uh, 10 inch micro hi hats <laughs> and then a splash the 24 inch mega bell ride. You know what? Actually, Phil, I no can't crash symbols, just splash it like five or six splash symbols. I can't wrap this show up yet. <laughs> no. I forgot. There is one more thing. We ended on a very positive note with Jay. Yeah. And he's really cool. Uh -oh. I'm really sorry to do this, but there is one more thing that I had to bring up today. Oh no. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Oh. I ain't trying to hear that right I know, now. Phil. We're I'm almost hungry. done. I know. I'm hungry, too. I'm hungry, too, Phil. Don't worry. My second soapbox of the day, and I'm sorry to do this on the last minute, but my second problem this day, my second soapbox of the day is with Zildjian. Uh-oh. What? You love Zildjian. I do love Zildjian. What's your beef? That's why this you, is a oh, hard... Wait, wait, let me guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You still don't have your symbols yeah, yet. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Shoot. I had three sessions this week that I needed those stinking symbols for. I, have, I had a jazz gig last week. Mm -hmm. I have a jazz gig today and tomorrow. I still don't have my symbols from Zildjian. They were supposed to be sent oh. last Tuesday? That no, sucks. the Tuesday before, I believe. You, why didn't you tell me I would have brought my sim? Like you could let I would let because, you borrow my Phil, symbol again. I don't want to use your symbol. I want my symbols. <laughs> I love you, Zildjian. But what is the problem, <laughs> dude? What is the problem? I only I all my all my symbols are Zildjian. They're I still writing the paragraph on on your symbol of what it how it sounds. Uh, probably <laughs> it's wet but dry. It's wet, dark dry, but light. Drippy. <laughs> Drippy, dark, complicated, yes, emotional problems. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Which is basically how you're going to describe me because I don't <laughs> have these stinking symbols and I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, but I want them every day. So every day I come home and I'm looking like, are they here? Are they here? But no, they're not, Zildjian. <sighs> Get Armad on the phone. Is that his name? Armad? <laughs> Armad Zildjian? <laughs> Anyways, oh, I, it's a little soapbox, that but sucks. I'm not happy with you, Zildjian. You made my soapbox this week. Dang. I want those symbols. Now they're never going to send them. Gosh, dude. I'm so mad. <laughs> but, you know, I'm so mad, but I'm so happy. It gives me hope. I come home like, oh, maybe they're there. Yeah. Maybe I can use them tonight. Nope. They're going to be rad, though. <sighs> All right. Anyways, it's short and it's sweet. That's it. <laughs> I ain't trying to hear that right now. All right. That's it. I'm just, I got a okay. little bit of beef with my Zildjian, comp my Zildjian symbols. They're not here yet, and I want them. That's cool. Uh, sorry, guys. No show next week. Corey's out of town, going to be in Mexico eating tacos. Or Disneyland. And Disneyland. Shoot. No show next week. No guests, no show. Unless you want to do it by yourself, Phil. Maybe I'll just call you. You and, could. And have a show with you through the phone. I mean, I might just be like, nah, bro. I'm going on Space Mountain right now. Space Mountain. <laughs> You just hear, it's a small world, like in the background. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. It's been a great show. 
Che, thank you so much for coming on. Go support Che and Haram Drumsticks. Yes. Uh, listen to the, listen to the drum San Diego Drum Show uh, episode. Uh, no show next week. Drum Brigade. Drum Brigade. Drum Brigade. Yes. Zildjian, send me my stuff. Drum Brigade. Drum Brigade. Drum Brigade. <laughs>